welcome to our today's session of taxation where we are going to discuss the computation of taxable business income. The computation of the taxable business income for the tax purposes. Now, the computation of the taxable business income for taxable uh, purposes is a bit different from the computation of the accounting business profit. In the computation of the taxable business income, we deduct only the allowable expenses incurred to generate the business income. We deduct only the allowable business expenses to arrive at the taxable income. So uh, in this computation of taxable business income for the year, there are certain expenses which are deductible against the business income. Now, for the expense to be deductible against the business income, it must meet one of the two criteria that we are going to mention below. Now, the first criteria is that the expense is only exclusively and necessarily incurred for the purpose of generating the business income. So important to note here is that the expense is wholly necessarily, I mean wholly exclusively and necessarily incurred for the purpose of the generation of the business income. So that statement has three very important ones. The first word is wholly. The second word is uh, exclusively. And the third word is necessarily. Now, I will give the strict meaning of these words. The first word, which is wholly, means all the expense is incurred for the purpose of the business or for the purpose of generating the business income. It means that, that all of it, no part of it, should be for some other reasons. Then, the word exclusively also has some strict meaning. And the strict meaning for the word exclusively means that it has no private benefit at all. It means it has no private benefit at all. The whole expense is official, is for the business purpose. And if it has some elements of private part or private gain, then we should be able to know the proportion which is for the business purpose so that we can only deduct the proportion which is for the business purpose. Then the word necessarily in that statement means that the business could not do without incurring that kind of expenditure, that the expenditure was necessary for the performance of the business, was necessary for the operation of the business. So that is the meaning of the word necessarily. The business could not do without it. So again, for an expense to be allowed or to be deducted against the business income, then it must meet that criteria of it is wholly, exclusively, and necessarily in card for the purpose of business. Now, the next criteria that the expense can meet, if it doesn't meet that first one, is that the expense is specifically allowed as per the Income Tax Act. So the expenses that are not necessarily, uh, not necessarily meet the first criteria but then the Income Tax Act specifically says that they are allowable against the business income. Therefore, if you come across such an expense, then such an expense will be allowed against the business income when computing the taxable business income. Therefore, we have two ways of testing whether an expense is allowable against the business income for tax purposes or not. The first is testing it to see whether it is wholly exclusively and necessary in kind for the purpose of business. And if, and if it does not meet that first one, then you can test it using the second criteria to see whether the income tax act, the, the, the expense is among the ones listed, is among us the ones listed in the income tax act as specifically allowed, or it is specifically mentioned as an allowable expense. Now. The general format of computing the taxable business income is, is indicated here. So here 
we have just a simple general format. In this general format, what I have brought out is the gross revenue. So this gross revenue is the one from the business operations. And then from this gross revenue, we are saying we shall deduct allowable expenses. We shall deduct allowable expenses. So strictly here, we are saying the allowable expenses as I have explained before. Then once we remove the allowable expenses, then we shall have the net taxable income. We shall have the net income for tax purposes. So a number of expenses may fail to meet the criteria of being allowable, and therefore they cannot be allowed against the Income Tax Act for one reason or the other. So a number of expenses incurred by the business may not meet this criteria, and therefore they are not deducted. Normally, the accounting profit is normally different from the taxable profit. The accounting profit is normally different from the taxable business profit. Among us, the reasons are that when determining the accounting profit, almost all the expenses incurred by the business are deductible when determining the accounting profits. And also, some non-business income may be included in the revenue item here. So this figure of revenue might include some non-business income or some non-taxable income. And then the expenses that are deducted, some of them may not necessarily be uh, meeting our criteria of allowable or deductions. So therefore the accounting profit might differ from the uh, taxable profit. Remember here, the taxable profit we are saying we are going to arrive at it by just looking at the revenue from the operation, from the business operation, and the expenses only the ones that are allowable. But when determining the accounting profit, we deduct uh, almost all the expenses that are incurred by the business and uh, even uh, professions, that is the estimates which are not allowable for the tax purposes, which are not allowable for, for the tax purposes. Now, Having said that we only deduct the allowable expenses, it is important to know which are these allowable expenses that we are talking about. Which are these allowable expenses that we are talking about? And to know these allowable expenses, we will scrutinize or go through the list of the allowable expenses. They are many as listed. They are many as listed. So first, we have, I have said that the expenses to be allowed are those wholly exclusively and necessarily incurred for the purpose of generating the business income. Then there are those that are specifically listed in the Income Tax Act. And now we shall go through that list of the ones that are specifically listed as allowable or as deductible in the Income Tax Act. Now, in this discussion, I am using the word deductible and the word allowable. The two ones will mean the same. So here in this structure, we are, I'm talking about allowable expenses. It can also be deductible expenses. The two ones will mean the same. Now, these expenses, therefore, includes what? Number one, expenses in kind in the generation of income. So the expenses wholly exclusively and necessarily in card in the generation of income are allowable expenses. Now, the second one is normal business operating expenses. We have the normal business operating expenses, and this includes salaries and wages. Examples are salaries and wages. We have rents and rates, postage, postage. We have advertisement. We have stationery. We have water. We have electricity. We have telephone. So these are the normal business operating expenses. Those expenses are included here under allowable expenses. Then the third item would be trade bad debts written off. Trade bad debts written off. So again, these ones are allowable against the revenue or the business expense. So these bad debts must be written off, and there must be proof that the bad debts have actually been written off in the books of accounts. 
have been written off in the books of accounts and the body dates related to the trade activity. They related to the trade activity. Those ones are allowable. Then, the fourth item are the specific professions for body debts. Specific professions for body debts are also allowable. Remember here, professions for body debts are estimates for debts that may not be correctable in future. So if we are specific that we know exactly certain debtors may not be able to pay their debts and we have made that specific profession, then those debts are also allowable for tax purposes. They will be part of our allowable expenses. But the general profession for bad debts, as we see later, will not be allowed, will not be allowed. Then the other item number five is capital allowances capital allowances. Remember, in our earlier discussions, we have uh, uh, discussed the capital allowances. We have discussed the various types of capital allowances. In this case, we have discussed the investment deduction. So investment deduction is allowable. Uh, industrial building allowance is part of the capital allowances. The wear and tea allowance is also allowable. We also have the uh, diminution in value is also allowable. So capital allowances are generally allowable. They will be included here under the allowable expenses because they also reduce the taxable income from the want allowances. Then number six, we have the uh, diminution in value for rules tools. Diminution in value. This is loss of value of rules tools. It's also allowable uh, at the rate of uh, 33 and 30 percent on the qualifying costs. So this is the loss of value of rules tools, the implements, is also allowable. Then number seven is legal fees. The following legal expenses are also allowable. Among us, the legal expenses that are allowable is the cost incurred in the defense of property rights. The cost incurred in the defense of property rights or the infringement of property assets, rights to assets. Number two is the cost of acquiring a lease. The cost of acquiring a lease or registering a lease. And the stub duty paid provided the lease does not exceed 99 years. The lease does not exceed 99 years. That is also allowable. Then we have cost of preparing staff contracts. The cost of preparing staff contracts. That's the legal cost of preparing the staff contracts. That is also allowable. The fourth legal fees is cost of issuing shares to the public through the stock exchange. That is the initial public offer. So that is also allowable. Then five is the cost incurred in correction of bad debts. Cost incurred in the correction of bad debts. So recovery of assets is also allowable. Then there is also the legal fees in the defense of arranged breach of contract arranged breach of contract is also allowable. Here the key thing is arranged breach of contract, not where the trader has breached the contract, but it's just an allegation that the trader has breached the contract and you are engaging a, a lawyer to handle that matter. That legal fees paid to the lawyer is allowable so long as it is an allegation of breach of contract. That is the trader is not the one who has breached the contract. That is allowable. So those are the legal expenses specifically that are allowable under the Income Tax Act. Then number eight in our list is the cost of uh, uh, listing on the stock exchange. The cost of listing on the stock exchange and uh, the cost of the initial public offer, that is the IPO, is also allowable. And uh, number nine is pre-trading expenses pre-trading expenses or preliminary expenses, which would have been allowable and they been incurred after the start of business. These ones are allowable, pre-trading expenses. And so long as they are not more than seven years old since the time they were incurred. Now, pre-trading expenses might include expenses like advertisement before the business begins operation some registration costs, some legal fees. Uh, these are part of the pre-trading expenses, some 
is expenses on stationery uh, are also pre-trading. So these ones, if incurred and they are not more than seven years old and they would have been allowed and they been incurred after the start of business, then we allow them. They are part of the allowable expenses. Then the 10th item under our list is the entrance fees or subscription fees paid to a trade association, to a recognized trade association. Entrance fee or subscription fees paid to a recognized or trade association. Uh, and an example here would be uh, the National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So that is a recognized trade association. So any subscriptions made to such a body then would be allowable or uh, expenses paid to, for instance, the Association of Manufacturers, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, then that would be allowable because it's a, a recognized trade association. Then in our list, we also have expenditure incurred on a scientific research. Expenses incurred on a scientific research, whether capital or revenue expenditure, whether capital or revenue expenditure is also allowable so long as it relates to uh, invention and innovations. It relates to invention and innovations. That is allowable. Then the on our list, number 12, is contributions to scientific research organizations. Contributions to scientific research organizations or an educational institution approved by the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes approved by the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes. So these contributions for scientific research are also allowable. The objective here is to encourage promotion of research, to encourage the promotion of research and also uh, to assist the educational institutions uh, continue carrying out the research. We also have in our list number 13 is advertisement and promotional costs advertising and promotion costs. Remember, a business has to keep on advertising. Uh, advertising is necessary. So except, we have the exception to this rule, except the cost of uh, putting up billboards. The cost of putting up the billboard, the neon signs uh, 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 is not allowable. This is treated as capital expenditure. And instead, the billboards or the neon signs will enjoy the capital allowances uh, in class four. And since we have already said capital allowances is allowable, so we allow the capital allowances, but not the capital expenditure on the billboard. On our list, number 14 is the employer contribution to pension scheme on behalf of the employees. Employer contribution to pension scheme on behalf of the employees. A simple example here would be contributions for NSSF. That would be allowable contribution for NSSF on behalf of the employees, that is allowable. On our list, number 15 is losses incurred in the previous years. Losses incurred in the previous years carried forward to the current year are allowable. They are allowable, but they are allowable only if they are not more than four years old. If they are not more than four years old, they can only, the loss, a loss can only be carried forward uh, for a maximum of four years after the year of the loss, after the year of the loss. So that is allowable. Uh, number 16 on our list is the cost of providing free meals, the cost of providing free meals to employees while on duty. While on duty is also allowable. So these meals can be from a canteen operated by the employer, from a canteen operated by the employer or it can also um, include outside catering. So provided the meals are provided within the uh, employer's premises. So it can either be a canteen operated by the employer or outside catering. That is allowable. Then on our list, number 17 is subscriptions paid by a employer. Subscriptions paid by a employer to a member's club for employees. <laughs> Subscriptions paid by a employer to a member's club for employees is also allowable on our list. Then number 18 on our list is interest charged, interest charged on loans to generate business income. So these are mere their own interest. That is also an allowable expense for tax purposes. 
on our list, number 19, is the bank charges and the other finance costs. Bank charges and other finance costs also forms part of our allowable expenses. So number 20 on our list are the staff costs. The staff costs, and in this case, basically the salaries and wages is among us the staff cost, the common staff cost. We also have uh, redundancy payments. Redundancy payment, uh, these are like retrenchment costs. Retrenchment costs, these ones are allowable. There are also uh, 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 staff parties, staff Christmas parties, they are also allowable. The leave allowances, these are also allowable. So generally the staff cost, the welfare expenses for the staff generally are allowable. Then, on our list number 21 is a realized foreign exchange loss. A realized foreign exchange loss is allowable. The key thing here is to note the word realized. Realized exchange loss, that is what is allowable. If not realized, then it is not allowable. Then, we have donations made to charitable organizations. Cash donations in this particular case cash donations made to charitable organizations. These charitable organizations must be the ones that are approved or registered. So registered charitable organizations and the donations must be, uh, the donations must be in cash form, must be in cash form. And then the other condition for these donations to meet is that uh, uh, the, 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 the donations must, must not be repayable. The donations must be not repayable uh, uh, back to the organization. Back to the organization. Or the person making the donation, that is the, the, the trader who is making the donation, is not seeking for any favors from the donor out of these donations. So once the donations meet that criteria, then the donations to the charitable organizations that are registered are allowable. Then on our list is uh, expenditure on the projects. Which, which benefit the community, which benefit the community are also allowable provided the project is approved by the commissioner. Provided the project is approved by the commissioner is also allowable. Then um, number on, on our list, number 24 is a trading loss. A trading loss is also allowable. A trading loss or a balancing deduction is also allowable against the trading income. Remember, our definition of a trading loss is a trading loss will arise where all the assets in a class of wear and tear allowance are disposed of at, and the disposal proceeds are less than the tax return and values and the additions during that year. So when you sell all the assets and the, when the business is continuous and we make a loss in a certain class of wear and tear, then that trading loss is allowable. That trading loss is allowable. Then we also allow the balancing deduction. So trading loss or balancing deduction. The balancing deduction also arises when all assets in a class of wear and tear are disposed. And the disposal proceeds are less than the tax return and known value and the additions during the year when the business is closing down. There arises a balancing deduction and this balancing deduction is allowable for tax purposes, is allowable for tax purposes. Then, on our list, we have discount allowed. Discount allowed is also generally forms part of our allowable expenses. Discount allowed, that is part of the expenses. Then we also have the audit and bookkeeping expenses. Audit and bookkeeping expenses are also allowable, specifically allowable in our list. So those are among us to the items listed in the Income Tax Act as allowable expenses when determining the taxable business income. That is, they form part of this. So our allowable expenses here can be very many as we have tried to list them down before we align at the taxable income.